Hi, how's it going guys? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Luis Cota and I'm a search engine optimization specialist. And today we're talking about a very important topic and that is how to submit winning proposals on Upwork if you are a beginner search engine optimization specialist. And so by the end of this video, you're going to learn how to make money using some of the tips and tricks that I, or methods that I use on Upwork frequently and that I've been using over the past year and a half or so doing SEO. So if that sounds interesting to you, then be sure to stick around till the end of this video uh, because I'll, pro I'll be providing some bonus tips as well. So let's jump right into the video. Okay, so tip number one is to pitch yourself. And what do I mean by that? I mean, when you're submitting a proposal on Upwork, typically there's different little areas that where you can submit your information. You can upload different attachments or you know, work portfolios that you've done or that you have, and you want to include those in the proposal. So if you don't already have, you know, some experience doing SEO, and if you're a complete beginner, you know, what I recommend you do is go to different websites that you find online or for, you know, potential industries that you want to work in. Start doing like light SEO. What I mean by that, like you can audit a website, You'll, you can typically find a little bit of, you can always find issues or problems to work on on a website. You can do keyword research always on any particular website. And you could use a tool like I mentioned in the past, like SEMrush, Mongols. You can basically just download the list of keywords that are there and you could sort them by volume. You could filter keywords that you don't wanna use and you could tag them on the side like you could say some of them are informational, some keywords are navigational, you could say some of them are commercial, and some of them have transactional intents behind them. Um, and then just tagging the keywords that way can be a great use of a portfolio sample. And so that really tells the potential person that's gonna hire you on Upwork that you know, you've done some of this in the past and you can help them do this in the future as well. So if you haven't already, build your portfolio just start getting samples of you know work that you've done in the past i'll try to include some attachments here and if not then you know just do the best you can try to do some sample works for different clients uh, there's a lot of examples on how to do this and i guess the best way to do it is just pretend that you have a client that needs keyword research or that needs their website to be audited go ahead and perform that work you could find, you know, um, you can find resources online for website audit templates, keyword research templates, anything you could think of for SEO, you could find it on Google. And so research those templates and basically build them out for future clients or for mock clients, right? Uh, once you've done that, you could tell the client, you know, I've done this in the past for, you know, sample work or however you want to phrase it. You also want to let them know that you know, you are a beginner, obviously, and there's no hiding that because when you are on Upwork, they could see your profile in the background or they could see your experience level. They could see the people that you work with in the past and they could see your ratings or your I don't know what it's called. It's like a score. And this is a metric that basically tells people looking at your profile how good you are, how great you've been rated in the past, um, which is something you want to look out for. You want to make sure that you're always performing 110 percent work like the best quality work that you can do so that your ratings uh, stay high. And so I would say that's tip number one, build out your portfolio and pitch yourself when you're submitting the proposals on Upwork. Okay, so tip number two, and that is to schedule a time to speak with the potential client that you're submitting a proposal to on Upwork. And so what that typically is going to look like is you'll select a, you know, an application or a job description that you found on Upwork, right? You click on it, you click the green button that says submit a proposal. And then what you're gonna end up doing, and I have it here in the background. So if you if you see me looking at the background, it's because I'm reading uh, you know, the areas that you guys should work on if you're interested in this topic. You select your profile, you know, if you do SEO, then click on the SEO there where it says um, proposal settings. And if you don't have a specialized profile, you should build one. Then you're going to go scroll down where it says job details and you're going to select like your um, your pay rate. And, you know, sometimes you'll select the length of time that a project will take. Just estimate, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect uh, right there. Um, and then eventually the important parts that you do want to cover are the cover letter, the attachments. Uh, those are the biggest things that are going to get you an interview. And if you get an interview, 
then that means you're a lot closer to potentially getting work and getting paid. So focus on those two areas. And then sometimes you could submit like a boost, your proposal. I don't know how to describe that part, but you basically use like Upwork credits and you can essentially outbid other competitors who are also applying to that position. And I'm not gonna get too deep into that, but yeah, just know that you can submit, you know, proposals or bids. It's optional. And if you really want a position that you, you should use it, but I hardly ever bid on my proposals and I still hear back from potential clients. So take that with a grain of salt. Don't put too much time and effort into that. And I will also say that when it comes to the cover letter, you you want to include something like uh, I'm going to I'm going to use something generic. Right. But in the future, I'll probably make something more specific and concise and probably do like a screen share of this. But in the cover letter, just introduce yourself, say hi, you know who you are. Talk, talk a little bit about your experience. Don't get too deep and personal about your experiences. Keep it light because in the end, when you get the interview, you know, once you've you know amazed these you know potential clients with your background or experience, even if, even if you're a complete beginner, you can still do this. Trust me, I've done it in the past and that's how I've gotten to this point today. So just introduce yourself, say hi, you know, my name is this, you know, I have about, you know, I just graduated in SEO, I've got my certification in it. I'm interested in working with you because this position looks interesting for A, B and C reasons. I'm specializing in say, I don't know, you could say keyword research and website audits or on page SEO. You could, if you want to go above and beyond, you could say something like that just so you can position yourself in the best light possible. And for attachments, you, like I mentioned previously for tip number one is that just try to include some sample work, right? So just go out there and start getting samples of keyword research of website audits that you've done, local SEO website audits, um, projects that interest you or like industries that interest you, go out there and just start auditing a website, run through a checklist that uh, anyone gives away for free nowadays, or just find a template on Google, just, just do a Google search of that, or a Google search of keyword research, or, or how to run SEO campaigns, which is something that you should pay attention to, and then upload those attachments, you know, and send the you know, send your proposal on Upwork. It's, it's kind of simple. It's as simple as it sounds. And obviously I'm going to be giving you guys more tips, but keep those tips in mind right now. And let's jump into tip number three. So tip number three, and that is to apply to positions that you are 110% comfortable in completing and doing well. So I know that it could be kind of hard to determine your skill set levels when you're a complete beginner. I know this because I, I started an SEO last year and I don't have any formal training just beyond, you know, SEO, getting my SEO certifications actually from many places now because I wanted to learn as much as I could about the subject before diving into being a freelancer full time doing SEO work. And so try to do position or apply to positions that look really easy to do. And that's how you how you're going to gain a lot of experience fast. And typically these positions that when you start off pay less but you have to start somewhere, right? So you apply to those, you complete the jobs as quickly as you can and when you and do it right, obviously, if you could do it fast, then that's great. If not, no big deal. But typically like uh, a smaller task would be like, hey, do keyword research, find me new blog topics to write about or optimize this blog post, you know? And you can use different tools for that but that's not important to right now. Focus on jobs that are look easy to do. Apply to those and apply to as many as you can because when you apply once, that's not guaranteed, obviously, that you're gonna hear back from the potential client or SEO agency owner. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But yeah, you wanna place as many bids or proposals or job, uh, job applications, however you wanna look at it, uh, to as many as you can because you want to increase the odds that you're going to hear back from someone and then eventually you'll get interviewed and then from that interview the interviewer will determine if you are a good fit for their position their company this project whatever the case is and then eventually you get the contract which is how I think this works on Upwork 
you get a contract for a fixed amount of time. Let's say it's a small project. Maybe it'll take, I don't know, a few weeks to a few days, a few months, whatever it is. And uh, if you do really well, then sometimes that can lead to longer work. Like some of the work that I'm doing now is full time. And uh, yeah, it's more than a few weeks, a few months. So that's typically what you want as a complete beginner. And so to summarize, only apply to positions that you're 110% comfortable doing. So tip number four, this one's kind of obvious, but I'm going to mention it anyways, because it's not really talked about, but understand the positions that you are applying to. You get a quick sense of whether your job or position is short term versus long term. If you're looking to get a lot of practice in, you know, as a complete beginner, then apply to the short term positions because that's going to get your foot in the door to a new position. You're going to get experience. You're going to get feedback on your work. And ideally, if you end the contract well, you're going to get positive reviews or a positive job score, whatever they call it on Upwork. You know, if you're a complete beginner, then I recommend that you work for, you know, long projects because that's how you're going to get a lot of experience. And how do you do that? You apply to SEO agencies. And that's where I've learned a lot of my SEO skills from. And I'm still learning, obviously, as a beginner. But I've been doing this for a short amount of time, a year and a half. And I've successfully landed several clients on Upwork in that time. So which is why I'm teaching you guys. And so all that said is if you work with an agency owner, they'll usually say, hey, I run a I run an SEO agency. Uh, you know, there's a lot of work. I need to outsource some of this work. I need help with a, B, and C, that could be with website audits, keyword research, building content briefs, doing blog audits, building out, you know, uh, reports, whatever it is, they'll usually state that in the job description. And if they don't, you can ask them in the interview. And so I recommend you apply to those, but obviously when I first started out, I believe I just applied to as many positions as I could. And most of them were short term work. So that's something that you're gonna have to get over, but it is what it is. And essentially, it's not even that bad because some of these pay pretty well. But keep that in mind. Apply to S SEO agencies because I recommend those. That's from my personal experience. Um, you know, that's that's what I would do for tip number four. Okay, tip number five. And this one may be a harder one to overcome or to master. And that is to nail the interview or just perform really well in it. And, you know, from my experience... They're, it's pretty easy to do for the most part, not to brag, but it's it's fairly easy when you're honest about where you are right now with your current skill set as a complete beginner. You know, let that be maybe like the first thing or second thing you say in a in an in an interview. Excuse me, because people want to work with you know honest people, and when you get a position with these you know a SEO agency owners, ideally then then they're going to know what kind of work to assign you and that is very important because if you if you say that you could do x y and z when you really can't then they're going to give you a lot of that work and it's going to reflect bad or terrible on you and you might end up with a terrible review and so you don't want to do that i haven't done that but you know i've been tempted to apply to you know more difficult positions but that pay better but uh, don't do that. Just stick to the basics and, you know, use the tips that I'm using or that I'm giving you if, if you want to use them because they worked for me so I can vouch for them. But um, yeah, these are some of the other red flags that you want to look out for. So let them just be upfront about your experience. Just do the best you can, obviously. Let them know why this position interests you. Let them know about maybe some of the areas that you want to improve upon and know that and maybe even let them know that you want to grow with them, obviously, uh, as an SEO specialist working under their agency. And uh, I've, I've met a lot of really cool people, SEO agency owners. And so I only have really positive experiences working with agency owners. Right now I'm working with two of them uh, on a part-time basis that almost it's almost full-time at this point. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I would recommend. That's what's worked for me in the past. Just be honest. Maybe 
you can look online about some basic tips on interviews, but from what I've experienced, interviews on Upwork are a lot easier. And so there's there's not much to it, if I'm being completely honest, but just uh, let, you know, let them know that you're looking for something long-term and that's gonna position you better for someone that's just looking to do a smaller task with them. So that's what I would say for tip number five. So the final tip here, and that is obviously to do your best, you know, when you're a complete beginner, you're not gonna have a lot of, you know, experience, work samples, um, but as long as you have a little bit of them, that's really all that matters. When you interview, you just wanna be upfront and honest about your experience levels. Let them know where you wanna go with your SEO career. Let them know that you wanna grow with their company, which hopefully, or their agency, which hopefully you do, because you're gonna learn a lot just doing that. And uh, you know, even myself, I'm, I'm working with two agency owners. It's great, I love it. And there is a lot of work on Upwork. And if you can gain a little bit of experience working with an agency owner, then that's what I would recommend. So, I mean, that's, it's, it's really nothing too impressive as far as these tips, but they're simple and effective, which is why I shared them with you guys. You know, when I got started doing SEO last year around August, 2021, you know, I basically took a course on, I think it was a website, it's a website called Coursera, went to HubSpot and I went to a couple other uh, websites just to gain as much information as I could about search engine optimization. At first it was a little bit intimidating, but then over time as I got some practice, as I learned how different people and agency owners worked, I realized that it's similar it's, I, I wouldn't say it's repetitive work, but there's a little bit of a theme to it, if that makes sense. Like there's a bit of repetition, but the way you go about problem solving and doing your SEO work, say like keyword research, website audits, they follow the same sort of path, but there's always a new way to kind of do it your own way, basically. And, you know, I just applied to as many positions as I could at the time. I think that was like, about a week or two, maybe three weeks after I got my certification, I realized, okay, well, I have I have the certification now, but now I, I need to get paid, right? I want to make money. So how do I go about doing that? So I think I spent like, I don't remember, like maybe like a week or two, three weeks doing research on how to get clients, right? And then from there, I decided, well, there's all these platforms online. Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer, I don't know. There's a lot of like little websites like that. Or not that they're little, but there's a lot of similar web freelancing websites. And I quickly came to the conclusion that uh, Upwork is perhaps your best bet when it comes to getting clients, making money, because if you try to get clients using your own website, right, which is one way to get clients, it's a lot harder because you're competing against people who have been doing this for a long time. So I don't recommend that path unless you know really well the specific niche or area that you wanna go into in SEO, which is a whole another topic outside the scope of this video. And even um, there's websites like obviously like Fiverr, but it's quite difficult to get clients there and I've tried already or just get work in general because there's so much competition and I would say for a website like that, you need to you need to niche down like a lot into uh, a really specific area. Like maybe you want to help, you know, chiropractors or dentists, or you can even get more specific than that. But and I, that's a whole other topic I won't get into right now. But with Upwork, you can work for as many clients as you want, or as many as you can handle. And so your project management, your time management skills need to be they're going to be upgraded over time. And so, you know, I applied to many positions on Upwork. I eventually heard back from several uh, agency owners, luckily, right? Because I was applying to many uh, positions. So I'm bound to hear from someone. And I was lucky enough that I got, you know, uh, I scheduled a call with each one of them. I think it was, it all happened the same week because I was applying in one day to, I don't know, as many positions as they could, probably dozens. And um, yeah, I heard back from some of them. They interviewed me in one week and they went decent. I didn't know where I stood because I think it took them like a week to say, okay, you're hired. And you know, luckily for me as a complete beginner, I got hired, I think it was like three, it actually was like three agency owners 
one of them was not so much of an agency um they operated like one but it was, wasn't but for two of them i was working for two agency owners at the time and now i'm working with different ones but it was really amazing because i basically leveled up my seo experience really quickly and you know i'm not going to make this video too long but eventually if you apply to a couple of them a couple positions every day you can even look at you know upward positions every every few hours if you wanted to and you will see new positions pop up and that's probably another really good tip is to apply early to these positions so because then you won't have a lot of competition and if your skill set even as a beginner matches what the client needs they're going to hire you they're going to interview you and if you can interview quicker than other people you have a huge competitive advantage because then you know these people who submit upward proposals they don't want to spend all day sorting through a long list of candidates who may be a good fit for their company or their position you know they obviously need the help and they don't this is not something that they like to do right because it's too time consuming they've got to make money themselves they've got their business to run and so the quicker you can be with your communication the better and um yeah i would say those are some those are some great tips to start off with yeah if you want to see more videos like this be sure to subscribe like the video drop a comment below let me know what was your best part about this this video ran a bit longer but it is what it is i wanted to address this question and so um yeah let me know what you want to see next i also have a newsletter actually where you could get gain some additional tips on what i did in terms of other skill sets that i built in seo to make even more money uh, as a complete beginner. So if that interests you, I'll leave the link below so you can check that out. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.